Uh, uh, so I just want to welcome everybody to, um, I don't know what week we're in. I think we're in week number eight since we're following the chapters. But today we're going to talk about uh, this brief chapter, uh, chapter eight workflow from R for Data Science. Um, Diraj is going to lead us um, in this discussion today. So I'll let him kind of take the lead. Um, and then afterwards, I'll kind of jump in. If we have anybody has any questions or anything, I'll be monitoring the chat as we go through it. Um, again, as usual, this is informal. So feel free if anybody has any questions or has any comments or wants to add any additional context to it, please do. Um, you know, just uh, either put it in the chat or come off mute and then ask questions. But other than that, I'm going to switch it over to you, DJ. Yeah. <clears throat> everyone thank you so much for like you know uh like you know uh, i'm hosting this session first time like it's very excited and and i'm uh, starting with my first chapter would be like you know getting help i think it's it sounds like a little easy for everyone but somehow especially i'm in a new r user so when i started using r language so i used to have like a lot of doubts and like uh instead of going directly to google i used to have like a, 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 I use personally R Studio. There are some cool features in R Studio which I use preferably for to find any function or a package, something like that. So today I want to discuss about like in a few tips and uh, how to get a help and when you're learning or like writing a code, something like that. So before going to Google, I'll try to like explain you like my personal like uh, help thing which I use personally when I'm doing at work. So first gonna be like, you know, R Studio help session. Most probably, I don't know which uh, console everyone use, but I use personally R Studio, but every console have something like help session over there. So in those help session, there have like a lot of packages. So which I personally use, like and if, if I'm confused about that, and I'm, if I'm using like, I recently discovered Emily is a package which I, for a missing data in a data set. So that's why I want to give an appreciation for this help session. For example, uh, I recently learned about deep put a base function. So it have like a clear, like, you know, <clears throat> structure of like, you know, how, what are the arguments need to be passed in this thing? And uh, what are the like, you know, clear meaning of like, uh, what type of data is going to be in the object. So you can see like all the detailed things of the functions and everything. So this one will be like, you know, one of the helpful thing in the R Studio. And apart from that, I use uh, like a cheat sheets. Most probably everyone knows. So like I recently used a shiny cheat sheet for my, one of my project. So like, same like that, like there are some, some uh, cheat sheets for everything. So yeah, these are like, you know, my go-to things before going to the searching in you know, Google or something like that. But yeah, obviously Google will be like, you know, uh, a good uh, platform to search like a perfect uh, situation, like a situation code. So yeah, how do you search is like, you know, basically like if you want something, you know, like you know, uh, mentioning the clear path is like, you know, gives an exact uh, solution for the, uh, for the problem. So for example, like, you know, I recently searched in one, one of my project is like how to do a, a scatter plot with the conditions in it and mentioning in a ggplot or plotly or something like that. So in a giving a brief description, I just said like, you know, solve the problem easily. So Google will be the, like one of the help helpful session. And apart from Google, we have like open source community. A lot of open source community like a full stack, or uh, full stack, overflow full stack, or something like that, or like a Slack or something like any open sources where people are ready to help the other fellow uh, mates who are having a trouble in like you know working on the code. So. Doing a reprox is might be easier thing, like especially like you know if people are like wants to share the problem which is not mentioned in the Google or somewhere else, and uh, maybe it's mentioned but it's like not getting any enough uh, clarity on the solution. So you can ask your fellow mates, but to share that code, we needed like you know we cannot share the exact code, so we try to reproduce an example. So that's why like in a reprox project uh, package will comes helps you in a lot. So most of the reprox project I can show you the like you know. Uh, how you can create a reprex uh, apart from that so reprex helps you like you know solve this uh, problem you can share to the like you know in open source company like a github or a slack or something like that so uh, i can show you that how the reprex works so 
I'll try to share the like you know our studio. So DJ, uh, before we go over to the reprex stuff, um, if you don't mind going back a little bit to uh, if you don't mind going back to the slides and going back to um, the Google thing here real quick, because there's a couple things yeah. I think that are really important. So if you don't mind popping up the slides again there, yeah, for sure, yeah. Um, yep. Uh, so like yeah. about back to the Google thing here. Um, yeah. so I think it was really, this is something, and I, and I wanted to add, I think just from experience and, um, before we start talking about reprexes was how to actually like, most of us know Google is a good tool, right? I, a tip that I have come across is, you know, adding R or R stats to my Google query searches. It just helps find stuff faster related to R for um, anybody that's not familiar with that. So if that is not, if that doesn't lead you down a path to find what you're looking for, I've also found it's really beneficial to, um, to I've also found it beneficial to do uh, the actual package name. So dplyr, do whatever you wanna do, and then Google will help you kind of narrow down your searches. So. Um, and for some reason I found if you do add the R, just R to it, sometimes it just takes you to Reddit. <laughs> so I found it to help to do like R stats or do the actual package name. And so, but, um, that's all I wanted to add DJ. So if you want to jump over to yeah. Reprex or if anybody wants to add anything else, you know, uh, please do. Yeah. So I can help you. Like, thank you Colin for helping with that. Uh clarification in the Google thing actually and uh, I can jump onto the replex creation so I can can you be able to see my house too right yeah so right now I'm creating like you know I'm taking a, a library like a, a data set like empty cars is a perfect example so for example right now I'm installing uh, uh, initiating the replex and uh, creating a like a, a test data variable with the uh, empty cars. So right now I'm filtering. Uh, let me see what is there to filter in the empty cars. So let me filter something like that, like a mileage per gallon about twenty. So let me do that. So MPG. 20. So if I run that, like uh, a So if I run this thing, So you'll have to bring in tidyverse as well. So oh. um, yeah, so that's that's the one thing that's tripping you up there. So it's working right now. I can see in the viewer. Uh, Yep. So yeah. Um, just a moment. Uh so right now I'm in put on. So yeah, so you can see like the reprex creator, like you know something to, like a test document. For example, if I want to, uh, I want to copy like a, I want to share this function to someone else. So I can create a like you know reprex here in the term reprex. Uh, I need to mention that like a R file name like a, with the input example. 
reprex dot r. So if I uh, run this function, it will create a, like a you know, reprex file, which is will be like a, it will be saved in a, a R file if you can see here. Yeah. I think you have a space in your file name here that's going to trip you up. Yeah, I think so. This will work. Yeah. So you can see the R file is created here. So we have like all the repress function. Hmm. Yeah. So you can see the all the repress function here. So yeah. Uh, I think you need to save the file. I think you didn't save the file. Uh, sorry for that. Mm. Yeah. So it will create like a replex file here. So you can you can use another functions like uh, there are some functions in the replex like a. Uh, if you got in a, like a, if you copied someone's uh, like a code in the Slack, if you want to convert into like a, removing all the comments like this in the code, you can use a, a reflex invert function, the opposite of a reflex. So how it works basically is like, you know, uh, you need to pass like an MD file, uh, .rmd file, uh, I can show you. Do this. So yeah, so basically the reflex is created right now. So you can see it here also. Uh, if I copy paste this thing and the file in a new uh, R file. So basically, it will create a like a RMD file, uh, MD file. Sorry. Looks like you'll need you'll need a capital R. Looks like you'll need a capital R for that file that you're actually trying to run with it. Yeah. Actually, you need to you need to create a uh, MD file. So I was checking. So yeah, like, thing like that, you can create like a, there is an alternative like a thing like into interprex. You can uh, create the MD files using a like uh, mentioning venue, interprex equal to uh, input mentioning the file name like example space interprex dot r and mentioning the venue. Like a when you are like a types of a GitHub or Slack, for example, I mentioned Slack. So if you run that, so it will create something like you know Slack version uh, reprex. Uh, yeah. So basically, you can create a, it's a when you use like a type of uh, uh, argument we can pass in the reprex, which helps you to uh, create a types of when you use like a GitHub, Slack, Slack, uh, something like that. And uh, in word. Uh, just a minute. So yeah, Replex in word helps you like uh, uh, Thank you.
yeah uh, so yeah so that's all uh, actually there is a deprec submit function which helps you to create a uh, when you create an r file uh, the that it will generate a md file which we can uh, regenerate into the r file like basically when you get a code from slack or something any github which will be in the comments like uh, mentioning comments so instead of doing that you can uh, change that into like you know eliminating those comments uh, into the r file so you can use that r invert function or r uh, uh, repux repack uh, invert function to do that and uh, most of the like you know uh, uh, this help session has a like a uh, is using a google and a cheat sheets or like a something like help session and apart from that repux would be helpful and uh, yeah that's all I think so. Yeah. So I, I think I think something to cover too about this and and I, I was wondering, has anybody else here used Reprex to create their reproducible examples? I DJ and I were kind of playing around with it the other day. Um because I, I haven't really used it. I when I create a reproducible example, I just kind of create it, but does anybody else on the call? use reprex yeah so i i thought we i thought it was really beneficial the other thing that um the other thing that doesn't that i started using probably oh earlier this year was base dput um and in fact i actually wrote a blog post about it because it was so transformational for me to actually learn what i think it's called dput it's dput um it is it's one of those functions that i wish i knew a long time ago and maybe i probably should have paid more attention to but like if you have like a an object that you want to recreate the structure for a reproducible example dput will help you output the code needed to create that data object so in the past what I used to do with my reproducible examples is I would actually physically type out the actual data object, which to at one point I remember saying there's got to be an easier way. And the input was the easier way. And I highly suggest learning how to use it because it has saved me so much time. And so if you're not familiar with it, I would certainly get familiar with this part of it if you're creating reproducible examples to get help because it was one of those things where once I learned it, it was like life changing. I was like, how did I not know about this? I've been using R for five, six years now. And so, but um, yeah, I wrote a blog post about it. It was so transformative. So I definitely say, check that out. If you need help, like reproducing like data objects that you can add to your reproducible examples. So. Cool. Anybody? Else, have any other questions or comments before uh, DJ moves on to the next topic? All right, cool, DJ. Yeah. So, uh, <clears throat> so yeah, that's what uh, that's what I was mentioning about, like you know, investing, uh, like uh, about reprex and. I mean, yeah, even I'm a, like a, a new R user, to be honest, I'm using like a R from like last, uh, actually from last seven, eight months. So, so I use like all the like blogs and R weekly, which will be helpful. Like, you know, there are some blogs about tidyverse. Apart from that, uh, uh, it takes some like a, it takes a little time. Like when I was preparing for this, uh, con uh, this presentation, I was playing with the RFX, but it's so kind of a little confusing, but it takes a little time to learn. But yeah, and apart from that, there are some couple of old videos like, you know, about it, regarding the getting help session. You can go through it uh, for the examples. And uh, apart from that, there are some examples in the references in the RFX invert function, which I mentioned earlier. So yeah. That's all. Do you have any questions? Uh, do you have any questions regarding the reprex? Yeah. Oh, there, there, 
that was a short chapter not too many slides <laughs> yeah <laughs> exactly so it's very tough like you know if you have a like a little lengthy chapter so you can prepare on it but it's like getting help what if, what should i prepare for yeah that's good yeah, but thanks, thanks like, for that, yeah, going for google yeah thank you so much appreciate it. yeah yes uh so does anybody have um before i ramble on or anything does anybody have any like other tips that they have about getting tips or getting help i mean this is just a few suggestions that the book has but it's obvious that you know there are many different forums and places to get help so i just wanted to kind of hear from the group if anybody has any suggestions that they have um i think for like maybe uh stack overflow like rejects and stuff like that it's pretty neat, um, but when you're asking for help, for example, directly to pause it, or like, I think this is an R thing. There's a little bit to like learn about, you know, putting your system information. And so they have, um, they have a template that you need to follow, right? Like what version of R are you using? What version of the package are you using? What's your uh, machine information, right? Are you using a uh, Windows, Mac, something like that? So, um, though I, I, I've found the, that a little bit more helpful uh, when it's directly to them, because uh, then you can really narrow down having all that information on what might be happening. Sometimes it's a package. Sometimes you actually, it solves itself when you like restart your session. And that actually happened to me the other day. I had a big problem. And then all of a sudden I, for some reason, I they were like, just restart the session. And then everything went away. It's one of those IT magics, you know, turn it back on. But um, just uh, in posit, it has a little bit of a different kind of flavor of how to ask for help, uh, which which I think is also very useful. Yeah, so to kind of add some stuff there. So if people are interested in seeing like session, like their session info, you can use the space function session underscore info, and it will output all of the information that you need regarding what the system, what system you're running, the version of Ari running, even like your computer system, you know, are you on Mac OS? And then it gives you all the packages along with like the package version and stuff. And so, yeah, so thanks for that uh, addition. Like we don't really think about it, but, you know, system level stuff could be affecting your issues too. And that was kind of interesting because um, when we were playing with Reprex yesterday, when DJ and I were playing around with it yesterday, Reprex is really cool because it will also give you some information at the start to say, hey, if you have a dot R profile in there, it will remind you like, hey, you have a dot R profile that you're using. Oh, session info also works too. Thank you. But that might be the base function. I think I might be using like a, I can't remember how to look at it, but. Yeah, that, that um, one, the one I put in is the base, base function. Cool. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so there's all that stuff in there, but like Reprex is like smart enough to point out, like if you have like an R profile that might be affecting something too. So that's like important for reproducibility or Reprex examples is there might be some stuff that isn't in R that may be influencing it that you have to include in your Reprex. Um, so, but yeah, excellent. Thanks for adding that. What other tips do people have or any other kind of things that they suggest to do to get help? using the you know empty cards or using that everybody's already familiar you know i've seen the helps where it's like copying and pasting like an array of your data i mean i'm sure you could do that but <laughs> but it's it's that a lot to take in as a as a person that you know you're offering your help Yeah, that, I keep adding stuff because this is one of my big consternations about going on to like Stack Overflow and seeing like the solutions for some people is like they will copy and paste like their entire code and then it's not formatted and it's hard to follow. And you're, you're just like, 
what is going on here? Like, let's boil this down to the exact thing that we're trying to answer. And I know people are on timelines. They don't, you know, they may not necessarily have the time to like do that, but, and they might just want quick help. But sometimes I see those like stack overflows where people do that. I'm like, yeah, I'm going to skip this because I'm not going to read through it and try and understand their code base to figure out my problem. So if I have like one suggestion for new people that are starting is like, if you have the opportunity to do it, like boil down your reproducible examples to exactly what you're trying to ask and use data sets that people are familiar with because it just makes it so much easier to parse what's going on. Um, and it's going to help other people who find it in the future. So. Yeah. On the other hand of that, um, if you find something that looks like it's useful, but like you don't want to parse through it because somebody didn't make that easy for you. I feel like that's a good opportunity to pull ChatGPT into the play and just like have it organize it for you. And it just makes it easier. You know what I mean? But that's a good use for that, I think. Yeah, absolutely. I think, and I, and I could absolutely agree. And I, I was going to open that question up too. Um, there's probably an opportunity for the revamp of the fourth edition of this book to talk about the, um, you know, the help that LLMs and like Copilot and ChatGPT can provide. So I don't know, does, has anybody have any tips on, you know, using that to get help or, um, or any experiences that they want to talk about? My or best there's... advice on, on using ChatGPT is like, with code help, like the the more you already know about the subject that you're going to chat GPT about, like the better that's gonna go, like, um, and just letting it uh, do things for you that you already kind of know about a little bit so that you'll be able to see very quickly, like, oh, that doesn't look right. Let me like double check, you know what I mean? So like going as a complete beginner to chat GPT on stuff can, can lead you into trouble, but, um, if you already know, like, at least the basics about what you're, you know, asking about, then it's a really good tool. Yeah, I I use it by basting, like, when it's a long error message. It's very useful that R has a trace back, but I just, like, and I'm, like, explain here, like, line to line what's supposed to happen, right? By now, there's some things that I, you know, that you kind of already understand. But if you're trying something new, um, and it's been especially helpful when it's throwing an error that is not about R, but it's saying, "Hey, the system is lacking a software that an R package needs to use," uh, which are like the hard ones to trace back. So. I have one more thing I kind of want to say about it. Um, it I kind of use it like the the old like rubber ducky method. Like when you're like talking out your code to some like something and putting it outside of yourself and that helps you like understand what's going on better. So I kind of like, because it's not always easy to like, like if you have somebody to go to by your code all the time, like that's such a privilege, but you using it as kind of like a placeholder for that to like have a conversation, just like put the code outside of yourself and you can find like, solutions a little bit faster because you're seeing it from a different proofreading from a different kind of angle that's it so i mean uh, say? oh sorry so i to to a little bit you have uh, said guys i use chat gtp every day for for coding and r and python related stuff i i have the paid version because i use it every day for any kind of thing uh, and I think with ChatGTP, it's better, of course, if you are very specific about what you want to do, because when, when I teach, for example, to students, people usually um, kind of uh, have suppositions that ChatGTP know the data as well as you or know what do you want to do exactly, but you need to be very specific like if you were explaining a, a child what do you have and what do you want to do and recently i also discovered some uh, package add-on to our studio called styler 
and a styler, what it does is that you select code or you ask it, or you asked, please uh, put in a tidy diverse style this this full script or this script I just highlighted, etc. So a styler have uh, work very nicely for me, and I think it's also a tool we can use uh, when requesting help in forums like Stack Overflow, etc., because provides you a very nice formatted code that most of the community can understand. So I recommend you to check uh, this uh, add-on for our studies called Styler. Uh, and yeah, ChatGTP is great. Uh, I wish it had been around like one decade ago when I was doing my PhD, you know. Stefan, I think you're you're gonna add something to the conversation. Yeah, just what Michael was saying about the what did you say call it rubber ducky method to explaining something helps often to clarify it for yourself. Yeah, uh, the, I wanted to say that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, people literally uh, have like a rubber ducky on their like desk just to like talk out the code and like get you know bugs and and be, I yeah keep please keep. Yeah, I want to say that's one of the other arguments for making reprexes because it often forces you to narrow down your problem and reproduce it. And often because you simplified the problem, it makes it more clear to you what actually is the problem and you might in the process discover it. I just meant to, uh, it's a worthwhile endeavor and I, I understand sometimes you're forced time-wise to just get on with it and try to get help. But producing a reprex might actually help you solve it, and you also get the learning effect of doing that. So, effect of doing important to consider. Totally. I think for my, you know, my growth, I think it took me a while to recognize but producing the. Oh, Stefan Salat. Oh, okay. Um. I think for me, and Stefan, if I'm stepping on your toes, sorry. Um, for me, it was like reprexes were one of those things that I just had to mature getting into doing. I know it seems like extra time to do it. And sometimes you're in a deadline, you just got to get done. But I think a lot of growth has come from me accepting the fact of like, I got to do the reprex. Um, rubber duckies are important. I have my rubber ducky here. It is something that I use. It is a technique that I use. Rubber ducky debugging, debugging is useful, um, especially to talk through it. Um, to you know, just to get like like Milo said, like just to get it outside of your head and to work through it. The other thing before I open it up to some more conversation about it too is, and this goes beyond ChatGPT, but go and see what other people are doing. Go out and go on to GitHub and open it up and see, like go to your favorite package and open up the source code and see how things are being done. And, you know, you may not understand all of it, but you might pick up a couple tricks that you'd be like, oh, how do they do this and see how they go about it. The other thing that I started to do with the books is I've opened up the source code for the books to see how they're actually writing the books and actually learn, you know, how are they actually creating the books and how are they using like Quarto or whatever to publish the books? And so it's it's beneficial. You're not going to understand everything because, I mean, Hadley and, and the Tidyverse team are all geniuses. And so it's like, but you pick up things and you start seeing and you're like, oh, that's how you do it. I, maybe I learn how this works and then you can integrate it in your own stuff. So, but what else? Does anybody else have anything else they want to add on getting help or um, anything else about the this topic? Absolutely. Absolutely, Boulevard. Be nice. <laughs> Be nice. Yep. That's the other thing. Oh, that's the other thing, too. That's a great point. And I think people forget this sometimes. And I'm not an open source maintainer. I'm not, I haven't developed a package that I'm supporting a lot of users or anything like that. But that's what people do say. Understand that some of these people are, are doing this for free. They're volunteering their time or they may be doing this for like an academic project or something. So if you do have an issue with a project or you have an issue with some code and you wanna ask a question about it, be really, really nice about it because 
a lot of this stuff was created by volunteers or people that are just doing it for open source reasons. And so it, it's just good to be good and be nice. Um, and then absolutely, like Stefan just reminds us, like the DLC, DSLC, like I've met a lot of the people on the DSLC, very smart individuals who are just willing to answer your questions really, really quickly. Um, you probably see the common mentors that come in and jump in. They are, um, they are willing to help and it's, it's a great resource if you have any questions. So. To amplify the importance of being nice. Um, I've been in workspaces before where it's like the environment was just so toxic. And when you don't have a, um, an environment where learning is ex except like a, a part of it and like mistakes are okay. Like it just, it makes the energy so stagnant and everybody freezes up and then you don't get this lush community of, of all these resources. So like literally it behooves all of us to be nice and keep it going. You know what I mean? Always. Yeah, I, I, put that, I put there, like, I remember that. There's a couple of packages. Sometimes they're not on CRAN eh, or they're just on GitHub. Um, but I've used a couple of, you know, very important packages for my research that have a whole forum, you know, so it's uh, uh, in their GitHub and, like, their issues and whatnot. So it's not like a Slack, uh, sorry, a Slack or um, a Stack Overflow kind of discussion where the person might, the, the maintainer might not be uh, following it, but then in GitHub, they're actually paying a lot of attention to that. And a lot of uh, other folks have run into the, the problems that you might be running into. So going into that packages, um, the package, uh, GitHub or something like that might be a lot better than just, you know, cruising around in Stack Overflow. I, I keep adding some, I, I believe you keep reminding me of some really good things too. Um, also contributing is really nice. And I don't, you don't have to contribute code you can contribute to documentation. And so if you catch like a typo or an error somewhere, like that could teach you the process of like, I've contributed in that way. Like I have not contributed code in any way, but there are some tidyverse packages that I came across a typo and I learned how to get help and learn certain things by just, you know, Hey, you have a missing period or you have the wrong verb conjugation here or something. And I learned like, how documentation works for packages doing it that way. And so getting help from the community by contributing is also a great way to do that. And, con and contribution doesn't have to happen through code contribu contribution. It could be just like open up a function documentation, read through it. And if you, if you catch a typo, fix it, submit a fix, submit a PR. It, it definitely can be very helpful for your learning and it could be a great way to kind of just um, get help on other things as well. So. There's one other thing. Oh, our weekly is available. This is a great, um, this is a great source. I've kind of fallen off of this as of recent, but this is a great place to get help um, or not get help, but to, to see what's happening in like the R space. It's a, it's a weekly kind of newsletter thing that people put together. It's referenced in the book. I've like, I've fallen off it kind of a little bit, but it might be of use to other people here. Um, definitely check that out. That's worth your time as a resource to kind of learn from. And then I think the last thing, and this is more probably just a reminder for myself. Um, it does, the book also mentions like invest in yourself and take time to like learn um, and spend some time every day. And this is because I come from academia. I don't work in academia anymore, but you know, everybody asks like, how do you, how do you write a lot of papers and how do you like produce a lot of like writing and everybody that I've talked to, they always suggest one thing. They say, spend one hour a day just writing. And, you know, I never really integrated that until probably about a year or two ago. And I don't do it every single day, but just like investing an hour. And I understand the privilege of saying that I have an hour a day to do that. So not everybody has that, but 
if you do, you know, 15 minutes, 30 minutes a day, every day, just consistently, you will see benefits from it. And people will suggest that Hadley said it multiple times. They ask him, Hadley, how do you write so many books? And he says, just sit down hour a day and write. And that's how he's so productive in that. And that's how he improves, um, you know, his productivity and getting better at R himself. But I can't speak for him in his other ways because I'm sure he's got his own ways of working. But I've heard him say that before. Just spend an hour a day doing something and you will see the benefits from that. But Okay, cool. Does anybody else have anything else? Um, feels like we're kind of wrapping up here and um, want to make sure I give space if anybody else have anything else to say. If not, I mean, we can definitely call it early, give everybody 15 minutes back. Mind for Numbers is one of my favorite books. Yeah, cool. Definitely a book uh, book suggestion there from Milo. So definitely check that out if you get the opportunity to. So, All right, cool. Kind of feels like we're wrapping up here. So I'll hang out for a couple more minutes, but I really appreciate everybody joining in, the conversation and the tips. Um, we will continue on with next week with chapter number nine. Other than that, I'll see you all next week. Thank you. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. Thank you.